Welcome to this list of the 10 mellowest classics of classical music, with tracks so mellow they're like the soundtrack to a nap you never even knew you needed. And there's a story behind this list. This is me, and this is my old school friend, Adam. Adam doesn't particularly know classical music, but he knows he likes it, and he likes mellow classical music, so he wants me to suggest some tracks. We ended up working together for weeks, adding tracks, subtracting others, to come up with this list. There were sticking points. Adam doesn't like long tracks, so nothing over five minutes. Adam also doesn't like choral music, so no Forest Paradiso, I'm afraid. I also had to learn that when Adam wrote things like, some might put on their list, it meant we shouldn't. I've also applied a veto to the most obvious tracks. Moonlight, I'm afraid, suffered particularly from the loss of both the Moonlight Sonata and Claire de Lune. And do let us know in the comment section where we've gone wrong and what better tracks we could have chosen. But anyway, let's get cracking at number 10, Morning! I think this may be the most popular piece we've allowed on this list. This is a suite of pieces composed by Grieg for his fellow Norwegian Ibsen's celebrated play of the same name. It's a wonderfully accessible suite that also contains the equally famous and very unmellow. Anyway, this opening suite presents us the warm glow of morning and majestically builds. And number nine. Adam had this on his list already, and I suspect he knows it from a British Airways commercial we had in the UK many years ago. It's a duet crafted with perfect thirds from the opera Lacme by the French composer Delibes, who, I may also remind you, composed and so this is a man that could handle tunes. Anyway, the flower duet was an instant hit at the opera's release in 1883 and has remained a fan favourite ever since. At number eight. Debussy is a master mellow composer, no doubt, and we cycled through quite a few of his piano pieces before settling on this little gem. It's a piece so smooth you barely notice a harp transcription. Arabesque is a term of artistic decoration, suggesting repetitious harmonious patterns, highly ornamented mellow patterns, and that's what you get with Debussy. Number seven. Come on, spit it out! Eternal source of light divine, a birthday ditty composed by Handel for Queen Anne. This duet of voice and trumpet has ever been popular here in the UK. And at number six, Another UK based composition. A piece so mellow you could have it at a funeral. Oh, it is actually used a lot here in the UK for funerals. It's the 15th of Elgar's Enigma variations, known as Nimrod, although strictly we should call this the Jaeger variation since Elgar wrote each of the Enigma variations as descriptions of people he knew, and this 15th variation referred to his friend, the publisher, Augustus Jaeger. Jaeger in German means hunter, and Nimrod refers to the Great Old Testament hunter. Anyway, it's a piece you can't go wrong with, even if you're dead. At five,
song was one of the only musical genres that Schubert had managed to claim as his own before his tragically young death at the age of 31. My old music teacher used to say that if he had survived as long as Beethoven, he would have been a far greater composer. Anyway, even in those short 31 years, Schubert's melodic and piano accompaniment writing meant he really was a master of the song form, and he demonstrates that here. Number four. So many Chopin pieces and so many possible nocturnes could have made this list. We actually had two different Chopin pieces on the list that I rejected as too famous before this beauty makes its way on, only just pushing out Philip Glass's Truman Sleeps. You can't make a list like this without any Chopin, can you? At three. A second handle entry reminding us of how good the composer was with the tune and why he was so famously celebrated in his time. Handel first composed this hit tune for his opera Almira, then reused it for an oratorio before reusing it again for his opera Rinaldo. Say what you like about Handel, at least the man was a good recycler. The title means Let Me Weep and yes this is indeed a saddie. Number two. Let's welcome the third and a half French composer on this list at the half composer is Chopin. Eric Satie's Nocions brings some shade and darkness, unlike his sunnier siblings, Gymnopodies, which I couldn't include because too famous. There's also a ring of the exotic in the harmonies, and it's good to bring a bit of dark texture into our list, while still of course remaining totally mellow. And at one, Verdi delivering the best right at the end of his life and right at the birth of classical music. This brilliant piece, the conclusion of his opera, it's a strange opera and there's arguments over Monteverdi's authorship but no one can deny the beauty of this aria. However, it would be good to remind people that Nero ends up murdering his pregnant wife Papia in real life by kicking her in the stomach. Yeah, I know you're gonna jump on me like Nero jumped on Papia. And ending, I think, Contemporary audiences would have been very aware of, so it's not really a happy ending, I'm afraid. So, I hope you enjoyed the list, and I'm sure many of you will have your own suggestions, which I'd love to read in the comment section below. Thank you! <laughs>